Toshi Okada's Late Night Talk. This is part 2 of the fourth video of Mobile Suit Gundam Talk series. Now, please enjoy Toshi Okada's Gundam Talk. Let's start. The first episode of Gundam is constructed quite carefully to provide the background information of the story. First, only two people are shown on the screen at a time. Even when there are three people, conversation is always made between two people. The purpose of the first episode is to introduce the main character, Amuro Ray, and present mobile suits and Gundam, and also, to provide background information by describing the relationship of respective characters. Gundam is such a complicated story, so the setting is very complex. It is so complex that a poor director may want to insert narration every 5 minutes or every 10 minutes. But if he did so, children would get tired of the explanations. In Gundam, a narration is used before the title sequence, but it's okay because the main story is not started yet. Also, this narration is the same from the first to the eighth episodes. So, it's acceptable. However, it is not a very good idea to use dialogues to explain the situation. Instead, director Tomino tried to describe the personal relationships and social ranks of characters in one-on-one -on -one conversations, in a manner that the audience can imagine the background of the story and the personality of the characters. I will explain more specifically. At the beginning of the episode, Chief Denim of the Xeon and his subordinate Gene talk. In the first episode of Gundam, the Xeon soldiers' dialogues are very efficient. On the Federation side, in contrast, there are always arguments and misunderstandings in their conversations. These dialogues indicate that the Xeon has prepared for the war, and has managed their principality effectively. On the other hand, the Federation forces has been off guard, and was caught unprepared. There are many people who say they like the Xeon better than the Earth Federation. Of course there are various reasons, but I think many people are attracted to a kind of functional beauty of the efficient conversations between the Xeon soldiers. This exchange between Chafe Denim and Jean during reconnaissance of the colony indicates a clear hierarchical relationship between the two. In robot animation programs at that time, if two enemy robots appear, usually they would compete for success, or, one would command and the other would obey. However, the exchanges between Denim and Jean show that there is a clear role division between them. This scene indicates that one is responsible for actually doing surveillance and the other is responsible for reporting to their headquarters. Jean says, there's no one. Wait. There's a kid. Then Frau Bo appears, and she rushes into Amuro's house. And the next cut is suddenly in the Amuro's house. The scenes jump from one to another, without explanatory transition. After Frau Bo enters Amuro's house, she is moving all the time. Amuro, did you eat? What are you doing? Don't you know about the evacuation order? Then she pulls out a bag, turns it upside down, removes things from the bag, shakes off dust, and then starts putting things into the bag. This scene shows that Frau Bo knows the contents of drawers in Amuro's house. As Frau Bo moves hastily, Amuro yawns and peers into the sandwich but does not move from the chair. By showing the moves of these two in this way, we can see the difference of their personalities, the time they have built up and what kind of relationship they have with each other. After the relationship between the two is described, Frau Bo and Amuro go out of the house to take a car, and meet Hayato, Amuro's neighbor, then Frau Bo jumps on him. At this time too, the conversation is only between Frau and Hayato. Frau says, Hayato, you are Amuro's neighbor. You should tell him. Then Hayato murmurs, if military engineers like his dad hadn't moved here in the first place, we wouldn't have to leave. It implies that some of the people who have been immigrated to the space colony, rather out of the earth, have even more subtle discrimination, and Amuro's father may be a privileged class, 
but he is not a very desirable person from the point of view of the neighbors. All these are explained in one-on-one -on -one conversations. All conversations explain the personal and social relationships behind them. The personal relationship is like, in case of Amuro and Frau, Frau likes Amuro, but Amuro doesn't. The social relationship is like the relationship between Shar and his second-in-command Dren. Their rank-age relation is opposite from usual. A 20-year-old or so boss and a 35 or 36-year-old, experienced and tough subordinate. In Gundam, these complex personal and social relationships are described by one-on-one -on -one conversations. After the conversation between Frau and Hayato, the scene changes to inside the white base. The newly built vessel is entering Side 7, a space city where the first episode takes place. What is the purpose of the white base? In Side 7. The Federation forces was secretly developing mobile suits, in violation of some kind of treaty, though it is not clear at this point what treaty it is. Because the development is done, the special battleship for carrying the robots is going into the port. So, if there was no incident, Gundam would be carried on this ship as Side 7, and Tamrei, Amuro's father, and perhaps Amuro too, would return to the Earth. And the Federation forces would make a lot of mass production type of Gundam to fight the Xeon. However, after it was found by Major Shar, a clever young officer of the Xeon, the Earth Federation's plan was completely destroyed. This is what happened in the first episode. When the scene changes to the white base, there is a conversation between Tem Ray and Bright, who will later become the captain of the white base. This is also a one-on-one -on -one conversation. What is your age? Bright replies, I am 19 years old sir. Bright had taken six months of training and has been in space for three months, so he wants to fight the Zion quickly. He is thinking, I'm not a boy soldier. I am an officer. He doesn't want to be treated as a kid, because he's not an ordinary soldier, but, graduated from the military academy, he is in a position where he can soon become a second lieutenant, or whatever. On the other hand, Tem Ray, heard the age of Bright, and gazed gently at the photo of his son, Amuro, 14 years old. From Bright's remark at this time, is this your son sir? Shows he is thinking that, Amuro is a kid. I'm an adult. Soldier. For Tem Ray, though, 19 and 13 are the same. He is thinking, it's wrong for kids like you, to come to war. If only Gundam is put to practical use, there would be no such absurd thing, and the war would also end. That's the difference in the standpoint between the two. Bright eagers to go to war, although he deeply regrets it later. And, Tem Ray, a father of a child, who is still sane at this point, reproves the young man's eagerness. The difference between the two is described here. Tem Ray, escorted by Bright, goes to the bridge. There's Captain Paolo, and again there's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Bright, who has been guiding Tem Ray, doesn't enter into the conversation at all. Captain Paolo and Tem Ray talk, so we failed to outrun the Xeon. We thought we would be able to outrun them. But we were tracked by the their battleship, and they found our secret base here. But now, we've got inside, so they won't be able to attack us. It is because this side 7 is a neutral zone, neither a Xeon's or Federation's territory. So, they thought that the Xeon would not attack here. However, Shar, has obtained conclusive evidence that the Federation is developing secret weapons in a neutral zone, and has taken photographs of it. So Shar, is ready to attack by launching missiles. Of course, a young soldier Jean, ran out of control and attacked first. For Shar, however, it doesn't matter who's attacked first. In fact, as soon as he got evidence that the Federation is developing new weapons in a neutral colony, he thought that the Xeon gained a legitimate reason to attack here under an international treaty. That's why Shar, hastened to confirm that the Operation V is actually underway by the Federation and that they have made mobile suits, 
That's all for today. In the lecture, I explained about the white base, that it was a newly built battleship. What is the difference between the new battleship and other conventional spacecraft of the Federation forces? On both sides of the ship, there is something that looks like a hangar, where, obviously, robots would come out in a standing posture. Seeing such a weird new battleship coming in, Shar, realized that, what's that? Possibly, something is going on inside Seven, isn't it? In other words, because Shar, noticed that, the white base is a ship to put mobile suits on it, the Operation V, of the Earth Federation forces was found out.